Hi, my name is Francis McGregor MacDonald and I'm a Principal Analytics Specialist Solutions Architect at Amazon Web Services. I work with AWS customers across Australia and New Zealand with a focus on customers within the financial services industry. I support our customers to create value from their data assets and to become more data-driven enterprises. I'm here to speak about data governance at scale on AWS and my observations about how organizations are evolving their data governance processes to drive successful business outcomes from their data. The data landscape is changing. The number of data sources and the types of consumers looking to engage with data are growing faster than before. This has added new challenges for data governance and it is needing to evolve. Data governance is aligning with data strategies and pivoting from a one-size-fits-all process to focusing on supporting many-to-many -many interactions across data environments. These governed data platforms supporting many-to-many -many relationships are being called data marketplaces. I'm going to dive into detail about the three main things that data governance is doing differently in this new model to be successful and how this can help you to enable your organization and your data users to accelerate the generation of insights and become more data driven. We hear from companies all the time that they're looking to extract more value from their data, but they struggle to capture, store and analyze all the data generated by today's modern and digital businesses. Data is growing exponentially, coming from new sources, is increasingly diverse and needs to be securely accessed and analyzed by any number of applications and people. Data is the core behind every business and every decision. Gartner states the number one technology area where CIOs are increasing investment is business intelligence or data analytics solution. While both the diversity of data and the diversity of consumers is growing, organizations are looking to this data to drive their digital transformations. 85% of organizations want to be data driven. Only 37% have been successful. Organizations are trying to build a transformation on top of moving foundations because data is not a stable resource. It is changing dynamically all of the time, both in terms of the sources and the consumers. Part of the transformation opportunity is the new possibilities afforded by the growth of data and the innovations it can drive. The organizations that are achieving the most competitive advantage are those who are seeing that evolving their data governance is part of their digital transformation. Data in an organization grows at a rate of two times every two years. Connected devices, apps and systems now generate more data than ever before. The IDC states that data platforms need to scale 1,000 times over their lifetime. Modern data platforms in the cloud can scale to match this 1,000 times growth. Data governance frameworks which follow traditional models are not built with an understanding that they too need to support and enable their users at this scale. A simple example is performing a quality check on your 100 most important data sets. How will your processes scale when this increases 1,000 times and you have to quality check your 100,000 most important data sets? Initially, I had a definition of data governance on this slide, but I realized I was falling into a traditional data governance habit. I needed to be thinking about our new data environment, and I needed to be thinking about the many types of data users. Your understanding of data governance will vary depending on your position in an organization. As IT operations, you may see data governance as a set of technologies which enable data access and encryption, for example. While as a data scientist, your interest in data governance is about how well you can discover, understand, and trust the data available to you. Gartner defines data governance as the specification of decision rights and an accountability framework. And your lens on this will vary depending on your role. Gartner also states that data governance is a necessity, but organizations lack expertise in implementing data governance. 
this change is hardly surprising. It's hard to have a history of expertise in something changing so quickly. So could we move to a post-governance model to create a maximally data-driven organisation? While this might give short-term benefits in terms of experimentation, we can see from the data presented by IDC that challenges arise when we don't apply data governance. To quote IDC, data governance is no longer optional for enterprise organisations. The value of data as an asset needs to be protected, managed and maintained to increase asset value. As you look to develop use cases, the absence of data governance becomes an inhibitor to success. Traditional models of data governance, models developed before the data scales and digital transformations that we're working with now, impose the opposite. Their rigidity renders them either a blocker or a constraint to data-driven growth, as data cannot be made available to our users. Our successful delivery of use cases is slowed down by the data governance processes placed upon the very data which is supposed to enable them. What is setting AWS customers up for success? I'm sure these tactics will be familiar to you. Every customer is different, but we can see some key themes emerging. Customers are looking for ways to improve their existing governance practice. Customers are looking to build environments that support data-driven enterprises. Customers are moving forward, developing implementation plans and roadmaps to get this high priority work done. While we're putting these plans in place for data governance, at the same time, a broader digital transformation is happening across our organizations. We can see in this data evolution the changes that organizations are making to be successful. Where organizations initially sought success by having a focus on ingesting data into platforms, customers are moving to a business value focus. Where initial data platforms were built to fixed models which mirrored their on-premise predecessors, Platforms are now being designed to evolve and adapt. With data governance, organizations are becoming successful by realizing that to enable the success of their data environments, they need to actively support the diversity of sources, data and consumers. I'm going to drill a little into what I mean here because treating a data environment like a diverse platform is the key we're seeing for data governance success. Historically, organizations have governed their data environments as if they were singular entities. Many sources or producers submit data into the data environment. Consumers access the data from that environment. A diverse platform, by comparison, enables the interaction of many with many. In a data context, a diverse platform enables the direct interactions between the sources or producers of data and the consumers. Enabling data governance to actively support many-to-many -many relationships between producers and consumers is the key capability for data governance to support a modern data platform and enable data-driven organizations. We call this diverse many-to-many -many platform for data a data marketplace. If the alignment of data strategy and data governance leads to a data governance model designed to support a data marketplace, what are the three key steps you can take to implement this model. The first is to create a data community to enable data functions, define skills, and to formalize producer and consumer interactions. The second is to apply focus, to define critical data products, and to move to a model with data governance from your data platform only on this most valuable data. The third is to automate the implementation of data governance and services across your data marketplace. The automated governance is modeled to securely support a breadth of services for data producers and to enable your consumers with their choice of purpose-built analytics and machine learning tools. In a data marketplace, value is created by interactions between producers and consumers. Let's dive into the producer and consumer model, the data community. In the past, governance, data quality, infrastructure and security were managed by one central organization that generally lived in IT. While this ensured consistent adherence to policies, it created a bottleneck for innovation and availability of information. Forbes recently published an article that said, 
by making 10% more data accessible. A typical Fortune 1000 company will see a $65 million increase in net income. To support agility within an organization's data platform, to support the rapid execution of use cases, we need to create a decentralized model for managing these assets. The data marketplace users consist of the three ro following roles. Data platform team, producer, and consumer. The data platform team is responsible for managing the tools and technology used to support the marketplace, as well as establishing the data governance policies, onboarding of users into the marketplace, and training associated with using the marketplace and its tools. They're also responsible for establishing the data contract. This contract is what the data producer is committed to maintain when they publish data into the marketplace. It may include things like data quality certification levels, update frequencies, end-of-life policies, ownership, business metadata, and notification rules. At the onset of the project, the data platform team will establish the rules for data quality certification. As an example, data may be characterized with different levels such as gold, silver, bronze, and public. Gold data might be data that is the most critical to the business, includes sensitive information such as PII, and is managed by the data platform team. There may be stricter access control rules that are followed for this gold data. At the other end of the spectrum, public data may not have any rules around it, and there is no formal approval required to access that data. The producer generally knows the domain best and understands the scope and intent of the data. In this model, they own the data and the governance around the data. They are also responsible for maintaining the ongoing quality and availability of the data according to their published contract. The producer is also responsible for granting access to consumers. The consumer is the user of the data. They understand and execute the business priorities and creation of new insights, data discovery, and business analytics development. They may create their own data pipeline to expand the usage of the data. In this case, data consumers create a similar contract to that of the original data they used. One key challenge for a data consumer is simply finding the right data for their specific purpose and understanding the intent and quality of what they're using. These users can spend hours trying to find the data they need for their analysis, or worse yet, recreate data that already exists somewhere else in the company. Creating transparency to data products is one of the key benefits to the data consumer in this model. The marketplace creates a decentralized environment where users can search and discover data products, request access to data, publish data, create new data pipelines, understand the data quality and lineage of diverse brand data products. This creates an agile environment that allows companies to move at the speed of business with the right tools for the right job, while still adhering to data security rules and regulatory considerations and reducing the risk of having their precious data products lost in a swamp of information. Engi is an organization which has successfully built a data community. Engi, one of the largest utility providers in France and a global player in the zero carbon energy transition, produces, transports and delivers electricity, gas and energy services. With 160,000 employees worldwide, Engi is a decentralized organization and operates 25 business units with a high level of delegation and empowerment. Engi's decentralized global customer base had accumulated lots of data and it required a smarter, unique approach and solution to align its initiatives and provide data that is ingestible, organizable, governable, shareable, and actionable across its global business units. In 2018, Engie decided to accelerate its digital transformation through data and innovation by becoming a data-driven company. This vision of data-driven company led to the implementation of a data marketplace they called a common data hub. The common data hub made it possible to collect and store a large amount of group data and then to share as much as possible the data enriched and worked on by the different business units. The platform allows standardized exchanges throughout the group 
while granting the necessary level of security. Engie currently has more than 351 projects set up on the Common Data Hub going on across the world. The Common Data Hub offers a truly cohesive solution since it eliminates silos and enables every department to benefit from equal access to the common framework. The Common Data Hub forms the backbone of Engie's data-driven strategy by enabling a data community between information technology and business users, accelerating increased data literacy at every level of Engie and helping optimize internal processes or create new data-driven services. All business units are now empowered with a solution to build data-driven applications faster. The second key step to implement aligning data strategy and governance is to focus your data platform team on the key enterprise data products for your organization. These most important data products are those which are used across the lines of business in your organization to inform the most important data decisions. Examples could be customer transactions if you're a retailer, or if you're a telco, then your CDR data. When discussing our data community, we characterize these key data products as gold. In a standard data value chain, we want to ingest the data, store it, own and govern it, have it discoverable and shareable, and have subscribed users able to connect so that it is available for analysis. This value chain doesn't look unusual, but a single data value chain may be a sign that the data platform is not supporting diversity. A data marketplace usually looks different. We can see now a data marketplace is starting to emerge. The data platform team owns the value chain for gold products in their focus value chain. The CDR data mentioned earlier, for example. But a producer has their own value chain to add data into the marketplace. Producers own and govern their data, unlike the focus value chain, where the data platform team owns and governs the data. This enables data governance to be scaled across our data marketplace as producers support the platform by governing their own data. This producer's support is crucial in enabling scale, as without this, either the data platform team becomes a bottleneck in the marketplace, or if the producers add data but do not own and govern it, there is a risk of ungoverning data becoming an inhibitor to the success of the marketplace. While there is a single focus value chain owned by the data platform team, as a marketplace grows, multiple producers will add data from their domains into the marketplace, and we can have many producer-governed value chains. BMW Group has been successful in building out this governed marketplace. The BMW Group, headquartered in Munich, Germany, is a global manufacturer of premium automobiles and motorcycles, covering the brands BMW, BMW Motorrad, Mini, and Rolls-Royce. BMW also provides premium financial and mobility services. In 2015, the BMW Group created a centralized on-premises data lake that collects and combines anonymized data from sensors in vehicles, operational systems, and data warehouses to derive historical, real-time, and predictive insights. BMW Group has worked to stay at the forefront of the automotive industry's digital transformation by using data and predictive analytics. To stay innovative, BMW is focusing on creating new digital and connected experiences and driving change in their value chain toward improving both efficiency and effectiveness by enabling data-driven decisions. Because data wasn't easily accessible, spread across many siloed environments, BMW Group's innovation was slowed down by its own IT infrastructure. BMW needed to more easily scale its data platform to support the growing demands of internal and external stakeholders. BMW Group decided to re-architect and move its on-premises data platform to the AWS Cloud. The company created a data marketplace called Cloud Data Hub, which processes and combines data sources across the enterprise to make it easily accessible for internal teams creating customer-facing and internal applications. To better manage data at scale, the BMW Group introduced the notion of data providers and data consumers to increase both the autonomy and agility of its teams. Data providers ingest and transform data, while data consumers use analytic services and machine learning services 
to leverage data for their use cases. Both providers and consumers use services in their own accounts and only share well-defined interfaces helping prevent bottlenecks. The front-end application data portal serves as a data explorer to boost the productivity of data analysts, data scientists, and engineers by clearly displaying data resources and offering a popularity index based on data usage patterns for users across the organization. BMW Group continues to scale out the Cloud Data Hub platform's capabilities to further accelerate its digital transformation and drive additional value across the business, empowering innovative customer experiences, new mobility services, and internal business insights. The third step to build alignment of data strategy and data governance is to implement automated governance for the data and for the analytics engagement. Many companies are taking all their data from various silos and aggregating all of that data in one location, what many call a data lake, to do analytics and machine learning directly on top of that data. At other times, these same companies are storing other data in purpose-built data stores, like a data warehouse, to get quick results for complex queries on structured data, or in a search service, to quickly search and analyze log data to monitor the health of production systems. As we see more and more customers using both data lakes and these purpose-built stores, they often need to move data between these systems. For example, moving data from the lake to purpose-built stores, from those stores to the lake, and in between purpose-built stores. We call this modern approach to analytics the lakehouse architecture. A lakehouse architecture acknowledges the idea that taking a one-size-fits-all approach to analytics eventually leads to compromises. With this lakehouse environment, with a massively scalable core and purpose-built stores in analytics, how do we govern? One reaction has to be to turn the data platform back towards single products by pushing the data into individual stores. This move away from a lakehouse architecture, while initially enticing as it appears to simplify the governance process, inhibits the architecture and the data marketplace by compromising, by introducing a new silo. It breaks one of the primary benefits you can receive from your modern data platform, that it can deliver many-to-many -many relationships where the consumers of data use purpose-built tools which suit their use cases and technical capabilities. AWS Data Governance and a Lakehouse is designed to simplify governance of our data environment while maintaining the ability of users to interact with their choice of purpose-built analytics. AWS LakeFormation provides a single place to enforce access controls for all the services that access data, such as Amazon Redshift, Amazon EMR, Amazon Athena, and an Amazon SageMaker. Where historically this could be challenging when using a data platform, and a collection of purpose-built data services to store and analyze your data, LakeFormation is designed to work in a modern data architecture where multiple purpose-built stores and analytics interact and support a data marketplace. This enables many types of consumers. AWS LakeFormation enforces security policies across multiple services. You can centrally define security, governance, and auditing policies in one place. Policies are enforced for users across multiple services that access data stored in the data platform. This reduces the effort in configuring access policies across services and provides consistent enforcement and compliance. This can even be done across multiple AWS accounts. LakeFormation also tracks who accesses that data. There is an audit trail and can prove compliance with industry regulations governing access to data. Access to data is also not always a simple on or off setting for users. Sometimes you want to provide access to a data product, like customer information, while still hiding a specific column within that data product that contains sensitive information. In these situations, LakeFormation can help you set access policies to hide specific columns unless a user has been granted access. This means you don't need to maintain multiple copies of the data for each use case with different columns, but can simply set different access rules for different groups of users. 
Amgen has successfully enabled their data platform with LakeFormation. Amgen is one of the world's leading biotechnology companies. Amgen is a values-based company deeply rooted in science and innovation to transform new ideas and discoveries into medicines for patients with serious illnesses. Setting up security and access control for each service, user and data product could be cumbersome. Amgen implemented AWS Lake Formation to streamline data governance with a central point of control. This enables Amgen to manage who is using their data and how with more detail. Amgen can now manage permissions on Amazon S3 objects like they used to manage permissions on data in a database. Amgen users can now find, access and analyze the data they need with the tools they prefer. No other analytics provider gives you the ability to secure data with the fine-grained access control and governance to manage access to all data from a single point of control with an audit trail. Governance isn't just about the data though, and this is where there is an exciting new trend in data platform automation emerging. This automated control of governance is enabling data platforms to start automating the deployment of analytics environments. This automation is allowing data platforms to truly support the data consumer diversity by automating the process of enabling data consumers with the right tools for the right job. How many of us have had a worker turn up and we give them a hammer? Their response is, I am a painter. And then our response is, well, if you wait, I can get you a bigger hammer. Traditionally, data platforms have operated like this, guiding users to a limited set of tools and a one-size-fits-all approach. The automation of deployment for data platforms is enabling the onboarding of data platform users with their choice of purpose-built tools. For consumers, they can now have a personalized experience when engaging with their data platform. The Lakehouse provides the purpose-built analytic services and the automation of data governance and deployment enables the users. Data users are more likely to engage with the platform, more productive on the platform, and create more business value for the organization when they can use the right analytics tools for their job. I've talked today about the challenges of data governance in modern data environments and how organizations are aligning their data governance with their data strategy to achieve success. To do this, organizations are creating data marketplaces within their organizations and then taking three key steps to govern them. They are creating data communities to share out the governance burden across the users. They are enabling the data platform team to focus on only the most important data for their organization. And finally, they are using automation to both enable scaling of their governance as their environments grow and to support the personalization of their data environments for their users. How can AWS help on your governed data journey and support you to move at the speed of your business? AWS can support your data strategy with Data Drives Everything, or D2E. D2E partners AWS experts with stakeholders across business and technology to accelerate the journey to becoming data-driven using a two-phase program to mobilize around a specific use case, to create a pilot, and then scale into production with robust security operations and a well-defined organizational strategy. AWS Professional Services can support your data governance journey with a governance at scale offering focused on data. If you are interested in how producers and consumers can interact, please reach out for more detail on the customer successes I've discussed. If you like being hands-on, you can read the AWS article on automating data quality with AWS Glue Data Brew and AWS Lambda. Finally, if you're interested in automation at scale, the AWS Storage blog has a post, Automation at Scale, AWS Reinvent Recap, Break Down Data Silos with a Data Lake on Amazon S3. You joined the AWS Summit to learn, and you can keep the learning going after the summit with resources from AWS Training and Certification. 
We offer many free and on-demand digital courses, as well as virtual instructor-led training. AWS Experts will help you or your team learn to build and validate your data analytics skills. When you're ready, prepare for the AWS Certified Data Analytics Speciality Exam, which validates your skills and provides an industry-recognized credential. For more information, visit aws.training forward slash analytics. And be sure to check out our AWS Ramp Up Guide to learn more. I am grateful for your time and attention today. My name is Francis McGregor MacDonald, and I am a Principal Analytics Specialist Solutions Architect at AWS. It has been a pleasure to speak to you about data governance at scale on AWS. I'm looking forward to your feedback, so please complete the session survey before you head off to enjoy the rest of your summit. Thank you.